Hi everyone, so now that we've seen um, uh, a theoretical framework for analyzing trade policies, we're gonna work through a quick example. So let's set up the environment. Um, we're gonna start by looking at just the importing country, um, which is gonna be home. So home has a supply and demand curve, uh, which are given by these equations. So quantity supplied is just equal to the price and quantity demanded is equal to 20 minus the price. So let's go ahead and plot those. Uh, let's see, so y-axis is price, x-axis is quantity. Okay, so um, if we were just in autarky, we know that supply would have to be exactly equal to demand. So let's finish labeling these. Supply curve slopes upwards, demand curve slopes downwards, and we know the demand curve has this intercept here at 20. Okay, so first things first, if we were in autarky, uh, supply would have to equal demand. Um, quantity produced domestically has to equal quantity consumed domestically. And so if we just plug in our curves there, we could have P is 20 minus P or 2P is 20 or P equals 10. So in autarky, price would be equal to 10. And that would be what sets our domestic supply equal to domestic demand. But we are not in autarky. Um, this is an imported country. And they uh, import this good at a world price of five. So at the world price of five, uh, let's give that a quick line. And a label. So at the world price of five, um, quantity supplied is going to equal five and quantity demanded is going to equal 20 minus five, which is 15. So quantity supplied here, quantity demanded here, and let's give some quick labels, five and 15. Okay, so we're going to introduce a tariff, but before we do that, let's um, just look at welfare in this economy prior to introducing the tariff. So welfare is going to be uh, consumer surplus and producer surplus. We add those together, that's gonna to tell us aggregate welfare in the economy. So remember consumer surplus is gonna be the difference between the supply, uh, sorry, the demand curve and the price line. So it's this triangle here. Um, so this triangle has a base of 15, which is the quantity demanded, and it has a height of 15. It's the difference between the intercept of the demand curve and the world price. So consumer surplus is going to be 0.5 times 15 times 15. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. Uh, and that happens to be equal to uh, 225, which is 112.5. Uh, okay, producer surplus, difference between the price and the supply curve. So that's going to be this triangle here. So this triangle has a base of five and a height of five. So one half 
five times five is going to give us the area of that triangle, and that is uh, half of 25, which is 12.5. So producer surplus is 12.5, consumer surplus is 112.5. Add those together, that's total welfare in the economy. Okay, so now we're going to introduce a tariff. This is going to be specific tariff. Uh, it's going to be little t equals three. So we're going to assume that this is a small country, which means that the world price is not going to be affected by changes in supply, demand, you know, anything that's going on in this country. So we introduce a tariff, world price is five. That means that the domestic price of this good is going to be five plus T or eight. So we simply for a small country, we simply add the tariff to the um, world price. So the effect of the tariff is that the domestic price of this good increases from five to eight. If you're importing this good, you have to pay the world price plus the tax. Producers who are selling domestically are gonna take advantage of this and they're just gonna charge a price of eight because import competition also has to charge a price of eight. So um, T plus T is eight, that's the new domestic price. Domestic supply, we now uh, plug the new price into the supply curve, S equals P, so domestic supply is gonna be equal to eight. And demand, plug eight into the demand curve and quantity demanded uh, at a price of eight is going to be 12. Okay, so quantity supplied shifts out, quantity demanded shifts in. So we are now at eight and 12. Okay, so remember that import demand is simply um, domestic demand minus domestic supply. So the gap between quantity demanded and quantity supplied has to be made up by imports. And so you can see that when the price increases, import demand decreases. So quantity supplied increases, quantity demanded goes down and the gap between supply and demand shrinks. So let's look at changes in welfare. Um, First of all, let's look at total change in welfare. So again, just consumer surplus and producer surplus. So after the tariff, consumer surplus, well, the price has gone up to eight, quantity demanded has gone down to 12. So the base of this triangle is 12, that's quantity demanded. And the height here is 20 minus eight, which is also 12. So the total area um, of consumer surplus is going to be 0.5 of 12 times 12, uh, which is half of 144, or I believe that is 74. Producer surplus. So quantity supplied has gone up to eight, price has gone up to eight. So producer surplus is going to be this larger triangle here. And it, that's going to be given by uh, one half times eight times eight, or one half times 64, which is 32. So if we want to look at the change in welfare, um, we could do it the hard way, which is to add up consumer surplus and producer surplus prior to the tariff, do the same after the tariff, and take the difference. Um, and if we do that, we would have, uh, let's see, 112.5 plus 12.5 is 125, 74 plus 32 is 100, and eight, sorry, 106. And so 125 minus 106, is um, um, 19. 
Okay, so we're not quite done yet because we also have to account for government revenue. So remember, it's not just producer surplus and consumer surplus. We've added a tax that's going to the government. It's staying inside the economy because the government's going to spend that money somehow. Um, so we also need to um, add in the change in government revenue. So it's going to be, uh, let's see. So it's 125 minus 106. So that was the sum of producer surplus and consumer surplus before the tariff, after the tariff. And now we need to add back in the change in the revenue. And so um, after the tariff, we have imports equal to four. The tariff rate is equal to three. Uh, and so total change in government revenue is 12. And so 19 minus 12 is seven. So the change in welfare is seven. Let me just make sure I did that right because I think my numbers are wrong, but um, we'll check that in a second. Okay, um, the easy way, we know that if we um, if we graphically look at the change in producer surplus and consumer surplus and government revenue, we have these four regions on the plot. We have this box here, A. This region B. This box B. And this triangle D. Okay, and we know that the change in consumer surplus is negative A, B, C, and D. Change in producer surplus is A, and the change in government revenue is going to be equal to C. And so if we add all those together, what we're left with is that the total change in welfare is going to be negative B plus D. Okay, so we can do it the hard way where we add up the big triangles, take the difference, add in government revenue back. Um, or we know that the efficiency losses from this tariff are just going to be equal to these two triangles, B and D. So the area of B is going to be equal to one half times. So here we have the increase in domestic production. So we go from five to eight and the increase in domestic, um, in the domestic price also five to eight. That's gonna be three times three. C is gonna be one half times the fall in domestic consumption times the increase in domestic price. So that's also uh, three times three. I'm sorry. B, not C. So if we add those together, um, the total change in welfare is nine. And so I did do something wrong in my math here because these two things should be equal. So it's 112.5. One, one, plus 12.5 minus 74 minus 32 plus uh, government revenue, which is well, and that's going to have to equal nine. So this small country imposes a tariff of three. Domestic price increases from five to eight. Consumers are worse off, producers are better off. The government gets some additional revenue, but overall, if you add all these changes together, there's a net welfare loss of nine.
So the efficiency loss of the tariff is equal to nine. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, relax the small country assumption. And we're going to let the world price depend on domestic demand. So we're gonna have a large country now. And when this country imposes a tariff, the world price is actually going to be affected. And when we're doing this, we need to actually consider what's happening in the global market. So we're gonna introduce another country. So foreign is gonna be the export. So um, their supply curve is gonna be given by three times P. Their demand curve is gonna be given by 10 minus P. So um, we're not gonna introduce, introduce the tariff quite yet. The first thing we wanna do is show the global equilibrium um, of trade between these two countries prior to the tariff. Pre-tariff global equilibrium. Okay, remember the equilibrium condition here we're looking for is export supply equals import demand. This means that the amount of goods leaving the exporter is the same as the amount of goods coming into the importing country, or basically globally, total supply equals total demand. So uh, let's start with import demand. Uh, this is S, uh, sorry, D minus S. So for the importing country, demand is greater than supply. So we're just um, uh, taking the demand curve subtract, so, and subtracting the supply curve. So this is 20 minus P minus P. Export supply. So this is going to be S star minus D star. So for the exporting country, supply is greater than demand. So we just subtract the two curves and we get 3P minus 10 plus P. Okay, and to find the global equilibrium, equilibrium price, we will set XS equal to MD or uh, 3P minus 10 plus P, or I'll just call that 4P minus 10. And that's going to be equal to 20 minus 2P. So what we'll do is we will uh, add 2P to both sides. So we'll have 6P. And then we will add 10 to both sides, 30. And then we divide to get P equals 5. So prior to implementing the tariff, the global price is equal to 5. And conveniently, that's what we had over here when we were just looking at home as a small country. OK, so now let's look at the post-tariff global equilibrium. So when we implement the tariff, something kind of strange happens. The law of one price doesn't actually really hold anymore. So there's still a global price, but the domestic prices in each country are not going to be the same. Because in home, the domestic price is going to be equal to the global price plus the tariff. In foreign, there's no tariff, so the global price is just the global price. So really, what we are going to have is uh, excess supply of P, right? That's just the global price. It's going to be equal to import demand as a function of P plus T. Because any the domestic price in the importing country is equal to the price plus the tariff. So... Um, we're going to do the same exercise before, but for MD, we're going to plug in P plus T. Then we can solve for P, and that's going to give us the new global price as a function of the tariff. So the left-hand side, export supply, that's still going to be the same, 4P minus 10. But on the right-hand side, it's going to be 20 minus 2P plus T. So 2 times P plus T now. Okay, uh, let's do, let's extend that a little bit. So we have 4P minus 10 equals 20 minus 2P minus 2T. So let's, um, so let's add 2P to both sides. We're going to have 6P 
is 10 equals 20 minus 2t. Now let's add 10 to both sides. 6p equals 30 minus 2t. And okay, uh, well, and let's, before we do that, let's divide by six. So the world price is gonna be 30 minus 2t divided by six. So now we have the world price as a function of the tariff of the importing country. Now we know the tariff equals three. And so the price is gonna be equal to um, 30 minus six divided by six or 24. So, uh, oops, sorry, 30 minus six is 24 and divided by 24 is four. So uh, home is now a large country. They've implemented a tariff of three. And in response, the world price falls from five to four. Okay, so let's go back to the importing country and let's plot this. So the original world price was five. After the tariff, the world price falls to four. But remember the domestic price is still the world price plus the tariff rate of three. So four plus three is equal to seven. So right away you can see, you know, the big difference between small countries and large countries is that there's not full tariff pass through to prices. So we implemented a tariff of three but prices only went up by two, and that's because the world price fell. So for large countries, a given tariff rate is going to have less of an increase on prices. That also means that when we're looking at um, um, changes in welfare, well, the change in producer surplus and the change in consumer surplus, at least on the graph, um, are the same areas, right? So the change in price isn't as much, but A still represents the increase in producer surplus, a, B, C, and D still represent the fall in consumer surplus. But when we're looking at government revenue, um, this gap here between four and seven, that's the tariff rate. And this gap here between uh, production and uh, consumption, that's the uh, total imports. And so this entire area here of C plus E is gonna be equal to our government revenue. And uh, before we go any further, we need to uh, make sure we update these numbers. So at a domestic price of seven, supply is going to be equal to seven. And demand is going to be equal to 13. And so for a large country, um, the total change in welfare is going to be equal to E for the terms of trade gain minus B plus D, which are our efficiency losses. So we still have the efficiency losses, right? We're producing too much, we're not consuming enough relative to the real cost of this good, which was five. But because we've pushed down the price of what we're importing, because this share of government revenue stays in the economy, some of the tax that we're imposing on imports really is borne by foreign exporters. And so home is actually getting some gain from this tariff through the terms of trade gain. So the price of what we're buying is cheaper. Okay, so let's look at those uh, for E. Um, so um, the size of E, I mean, this is gonna be um, total imports, right? Uh, so that is 13 minus seven. Uh, we're consuming 13, we're, produ we're only producing seven. So we have to be importing six goods to make up the difference times the amount that we push down the world price. So how much of a good deal how much are we saving on what we're still importing relative to the pre-tariff world? 
So we push down the price by one, which means that the terms of trade gain is going to be equal to six. And B plus D Let's see, so B is going to be equal to one half. Uh, let's see, the increase in production is two, increases price is two, two times two. And D is going to be equal to one half base times height of this triangle. Fall in consumption is two, and the increase in price is two. So this is also two times two. And so if we add those together, the efficiency losses are four. So the total change in welfare for this country is going to be six minus four or two. So in this case, the terms of trade gain actually outweighs the efficiency losses. So we found an example where even though tariffs um, uh, you know, do have these costs, some of them are borne by the foreign country. And so the net change in welfare for home is positive. So this is not always going to be the case. Um, you know, say we set the tariff rate equal to um, five. So at a world price of five um, plus a tariff rate of ten. Uh, you know, even before we get to the world price falling some, um, you know, five plus ten. Uh, sorry, five plus five gets us back to uh, basically the autarky price. So, um, you know, before the world price falls, um, we're not importing anything. So it might fall a little bit, but imports are just going to fall so much that the terms of trade gain, even though we're pushing down price more, there's fewer imports that we're actually still saving money on. So the terms of trade gain is going to get smaller if we increase the tariff rate. And the efficiency losses, you know, these two triangles B and D are going to be getting larger. So for larger tariffs, the efficiency losses grow and the terms of trade gain shrinks. So um, this was in the range where we had a positive uh, increase, uh, which is more likely for small tariffs. But as we increase that tariff rate, it's more likely that the tariff is going to be costly in that terms. Um, Okay, so lastly, just remember that you know this partial equilibrium welfare analysis is a it's a pretty general framework. So, with these domestic supply and demand curves for this good, and remembering that um, you know tariffs or subsidies or quotas are going to affect the inputs that we use um, into these uh, supply and demand curves. So, a tariff means that the price is uh, going to be the price plus the tariff in the importing country. Say we're doing an exporting subsidy over here in foreign. Well, now the price is going to be P plus S in the exporting country, right? Because exporters are going to need to charge consumers the amount of the subsidy in order to be induced or incentivized to sell domestically. So we could do a very similar analysis of export subsidies. Um, and quotas would be a little more complicated, but you know you could implement a, a quantity restriction here uh, simply by setting the quantities to a certain number and finding the equilibrium price. So this is a general framework that we can analyze uh, multiple types of trade policies within.